Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Garrison, and I want to welcome you to this special program, 11 Days of Global Unity, between September 11th, last Saturday, uh, and September uh, 21st, uh, which is International Peace Day. Uh, we are privileged to be partnering with 11 Days of Global Unity, uh, with We the World, with the Sign Network, uh, and with uh, related organizations worldwide as a special offering uh, by Humanity Rising and Ubiquity University uh, during these really profound days between the 20th anniversary of 9-11 uh, and the International Day of Peace. Today, we're offering a tribute to children and youth. We often think of children and youth as young and rather marginal, and uh, they're gonna be important when they grow up. Uh, but we're in a world right now, uh, everyone, uh, where the population under the age of 25 constitutes 42% of the entire global population. If you think that we're nearly eight billion human beings on this planet, uh, roughly 3.5 going on 4 billion of our humankind are under 25 years old. In sub-Saharan Africa, for example, 50% of the entire populations of all those countries are under 25 years old. Uh, India, uh, last year became the youngest country in the world. 64% of all the population of a subcontinent, 1.3, 1.4 billion people, 64% of India is under 25 years old. Uh, it's an extraordinary thing. And what we know about these young people are they are acutely aware of the climate, of the environment. Uh, Pew Research Center just released a study of over 75 countries where they interviewed youth. And they have found out that a significant percentage of young people around the world are so concerned about climate change, they believe that we're doomed. The Gen Zs that are now moving into universities in the United States and Europe and around the world are demanding courses uh, in climate change, in ecology. They're no longer interested as many previous generations uh, after the 1960s in engineering and science and making lots of money. Um, these young people going into institutions of higher education uh, want to become ecologists. They want to get involved with regeneration. And uh, studies coming out of Chatham House, for example, are indicating that not only are they aware of the environment, aware of climate change, demanding training, but they're willing to take leadership. They want to lead this uh, revolution in ecological awareness uh, and in regeneration. And that's one reason why we've uh, created uh, the Global Regeneration Corps that has come out of the three to 400 organizations involved with Humanity Rising uh, as an opportunity worldwide uh, for people of all generations uh, to come together, but with a focus on young people, because we are now moving in to an era of escalating increasingly lethal ecological turbulence. The young people know that. And they also know that our governments are increasingly unable to preserve any kind of stability in the face of the rising turbulence. And they know that they're ground zero. So that's the impulse behind the Global Regeneration Corps and the programs that we've been developing in, in regenerative action and tolerance and peace study. That's one of the reasons why we're offering scholarships uh, to the We the World in 11 Days a staff and people that are in their network because we wanna support this impulse uh, around the world. Uh, so I wanna welcome everyone in the spirit of young people 
who are aware, who are committed, and who are ready to take action if they're given the opportunities and the training uh, to do so. Uh, so that's our program uh, for today. Before we launch uh, into the uh, content, let us pause as we always do on Humanity Rising. Let's just take a breath as we gather together in this uh, tumultuous, chaotic world of ours. Let's just center ourselves in our bodies. Take a breath. Close your eyes. And center your attention on your heart. See if you can listen to your heartbeat just for a minute. In a spirit of gratitude and deep thanksgiving that you're alive. And from your beating heart, feel love for all sentient beings. So that's a Thank you, everyone. Now with an open heart and a heart full of gratitude and love for each and every one of you who are joining our session today, I want to turn the program now over to my good friend and colleague, Rick Olfick. You know him well. Uh, he's the co-founder of 11 Days of Global Unity, which was put together for the first time in 2004. Uh, he's also the founder of We the World, uh, and he's been one of the tireless crusaders for human betterment and holistic awareness and living uh, and is uh, uh, an epicenter of transformational change. Uh, so, Rick, I want to welcome you once again to day six of Humanity Rising, and I turn the program over to you. Thank you, Jim Garrison and Rick Buckley, along with Ubiquity University and Humanity Rising for broadcasting all of the 11 Days of Global Unity Summit panels and for offering master's degree scholarships in peace and tolerance, as well as regenerative action for 11 of our volunteers in honor of our dear friend, Avon Madison from Pathways to Peace, for 11 days of global unity. I and we greatly appreciate your partnership and collaboration. My name is Rick Ulfick and I'm the founder of We The World and the We Campaign at we.net. And I'm the co-creator of 11 days of global unity with my dear friend, Troy Lush. You can find out about all of the 11 days of global unity broadcasts and events by going to we.net. 
and we invite you to collaborate with us as a volunteer or as an organization partner as well. Just go to we.net because it's all about we. Today on our Day for Children and Youth, we're excited to bring to you our tribute to the change makers working on We the World's campaign for children and youth. And I'd like to start with my dear friend, Heidi Little, who is the coordinator for We the World's campaign for children and youth. Heidi Little has worked with children and youth for many years as a teacher, founder of the Center for Social and Emotional Learning, and as the co-creator of International Children's Month. Also, Heidi is a wonderful singer, songwriter, and recording artist. And uh, so take it away, Heidi. Tell, tell us what has motivated you to do this important work that you've been doing. Oh. Well, <clears throat> thank you, Rick, for the beautiful introduction. It is always a pleasure to be with you, and I'm looking forward to our, our time together today. We have one of my right wing, a couple of my right wing people with us also joining us later on. Uh, so freedom, you know, to be able to express ourselves and to, to create what must be created due to inspiration and passion. Uh, is the foundation of my work, um, allowing people to um, do their creativity. And uh, in 2003, I, I was a, um, always been a musician and an educator at a parallel career thing going on. And in 2003, I was really praying for the children um, daily and really feeling for their lack of input in the world when they were the ones seeming to be suffering the most. So um, we launched International Children's Month and I began designing um, progressive education platforms and activity platforms for youth so that they could have a spotlight have a place to stand from, a stage in which to reach out to everyone and, and share their hopes and their dreams and what they were creating. And we did that for mm, six years before I met We The World. And uh, it was a natural fit. And when Rick invited me on to um, help maintain and support the children and youth theme, I was very happy to come aboard and do that. And, um, you know, this understanding of, of we-ness, of moving from the I to the we, of moving from the I to the we to the one, you know, children have a natural inclination for that. They have a natural ability um, coming from their childhood into their adult youthhood to understand unity and they're really good at it and there's no reason why they shouldn't be showing us how to do it and uh in 2019 they really did when they took to the streets and they showed us and um we're in these unprecedented times and and these these children and youth are going to be our leaders and i'm very proud of the ones that we work with i am honored to be able to call them my friends and my colleagues and um and so, you know, the, the we children and youth team, they've worked really hard. I'm an, I'm a coach. So, you know, it's, it's come very naturally to me to be able to work with our different youth leaders. And they ask me um, my advice on some things when they feel like I can give them some input. And for the most part, I just really support them in whatever it is that they're doing, whatever their project is, whatever their panel is whatever they're um, wanting to create. And when you give someone your time, your care and your attention, that simple thing uh, helps elevate them and can give uh, great wind to the wings of the ones we are focusing on. So uh, I hope I answered some of your question, Rick. Well, yes. 
<laughs> totally, totally. Yay. Shall we bring in um, one of the uh, young people that you were talking about? Yeah, You, you want to introduce her to everyone? Yeah, absolutely. Yay. All right. So Raheen Fatima is our Youth Ambassador for Pakistan, and she has done an outstanding standing job of bringing together uh, children um, of all age groups and ethnicities um, who are all working on that expression of peace and love and understanding uh, in a world that is desperate for that type of injection of hope and grace. So Raheen is wonderful. She's done hundreds of interviews um she is becoming known at the united nations she is a wonderful human being who works tirelessly for peace and um and i love her so raheem come on in and she's also a stand-up comedian and she's super funny and uh come in and and let's have you have you tell whatever you want to share about what's going on with you i need the the latest anyway updates about what's going on so Awesome. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for having me on. So, well, I'm 14. I just turned 14 and I'm a sound of comedian, I'm a writer, an entrepreneur, a teacher, an interviewer, theater actress, a child rights and uh, a peace activist. And the goal of my life is to empower everybody around me, the religion, the gods, the creed. So that's that's basically me and I've been working with uh, International Children's Month for about two years now and I'm so proud of my work um, that I've done with them and to have a Heidi around is so so interesting because I mean I, I feel like I can share everything very openly with her that be even personal things um, and the way that we've been able to put so many panels panel discussions and events together is just awesome um, and this year on June 21st, we were World Peace and Prayer Day, we were able to put on like six panels with people all ages coming up. In fact, we had somebody that was 80 years old and we had somebody that was 80 years old, so 80 and eight. We had like literally generations apart, you know, people coming in and talking about the same things and having the same passion uh, was just amazing to see. And in all that, Rick has really supported us. Um, um, so I'm so thankful for, you know, all the support from everybody that's watching, from everybody that's here on the panel today. Um, and I always feel feel loved and welcomed, even though I can be very goofy and sometimes a bit of a drama queen. But well, you guys know me for who I am. And you're lovely, and we appreciate you in every way. Yay. <laughs> That's that's great. And I was kind of curious to ask you, Raheen, um, where do you think your motivation comes from to do this work of kind of repairing, you know, the damage that you see around you, what <laughs> what the, the adults have done, you know what I mean? And um, as opposed to, let's say, running away and escaping into video games or or some other kind of thing and just going in another direction why, why are you motivated to do this work for peace and connection and um and i understand i you you didn't say it before but i i love to tell people what you have said in the past which is that you will actually create situations like through your work with stand-up comedy or your theater work which allow situations like that allow the adults to feel more comfortable talking about hot button issues that they normally might not talk about and so you're trying to help them out but where where does that come from i mean why do you think i mean you're not you know other kids you know aren't doing that right or or is it am i wrong does everybody you know do the same thing i i don't think so uh, well, uh, for the record, I've never played a video game in my life because I, you know, everybody has their own interests. I do not say that it's bad because my own brother loves video games. So, 
uh, I should be careful. Um, <laughs> but uh, I feel like this really comes from a personal event. Uh, my brother got cancer when he was very young, and this is from about three, four years ago. And when he was diagnosed and to what our family went through, and I did personally too, I had a realization. Um, and I understood the fact that nobody's too young to die and nobody's too old to, you know, really live their life. So why not I make impact now? Because well, not to sound too spooky, I've got you know, no idea whether I'd live up to 18 or after that or anything. So I feel like really living in the moment, like all, I've always wanted to contribute to this society. So I just want to do it earlier. So being in the moment and I died satisfied, that's how it really came from. And I feel like a lot of children are standing up, but everybody has their own specific ways of contributing to the society that the activism or taking active steps towards it. So people are starting and I think we have started a little bit of a movement because when I started asking children here in Pakistan that I knew um, uh, whether they want to be part of it, we had all sort of, you know, <clears throat> reply stab but right now we've got so many children that want to join and you know they're bringing in more people so we have a whole gang thing that has been going on um and when i see the impact of my work because i do get messages um and i i'm with my work with theater and stand-up comedy i'm able to see like real lifetime results i'm like oh my god this melts my heart uh, because I was, um, I had a chance to work on children's rights and about child abuse through theater plays and puppet plays. And when we performed that in, um, all around Pakistan, actually, in charity schools, uh, teaching children about what their rights are <clears throat> and also about what is child abuse, how to prevent it, how to know when you're in a situation, uh, how to spot that awkward conversation. Um, and the response that I got, that was the best audience I ever had. So I feel like these little, you know, um, things and these little steps that I take towards, you know, really making the best, you know, of my impact, I think really just fuels the energy I have past midnight. I, I should brag about this. I wake up very late at night or stay up very late at night. Um, but I do what I do. And I love it. So. <laughs> so it also sounds like your family is very supportive because otherwise they might say hey why don't you just act like other girls and be nice and maybe don't play video games but but uh, do something else learn sewing and, and you know i don't know i'm not sure what what that would look like but but it sounds like that uh, your your family is very supportive of what you're doing right yeah, they're very, very supportive, my mom and my dad. Uh, and, you know, I see that I'm a bit of like a diva here because my mom brushes my hair. She got gets you know, things ready. My dad gets things ready. So, you know, I've got a whole crew going on here, to be very honest. Uh, but, yeah, they're very supportive with everything because uh, I'm hard to, like, you know, really hold up with. Um, as well as I feel like um, I do a lot of things. I crochet, I paint nails, I do a lot of makeup and all. So I, I am I am into girly things and I'm into teenage stuff. There's a whole lot of drama going on in my life. I just don't like to share it with all people. Uh, but uh, no, I like to, you know, really just <clears throat> have all sorts of things in my life because that's one of the most asked questions about do you still go to school? Do you still have, you know, a life with the schedule and everything? But I feel like I've learned how to juggle things around because some point I'm too, too into things and not really having a lot of professional focus. And then too into, you know, I'm very professionally focused. So I feel like right now I found my balance. That's great. And that's, that's something that is, is a great goal for all of us balance in our lives uh, between, you know, the mission that we're on and, you know, and connecting with the people around us who may not necessarily be on that same mission. So we want to, uh, Heidi, bring in your your uh, next guest to, to that we can talk with. Absolutely. Thank you, Raheem, for everything. Powerhouse. Powerhouse. Yay. 
Um, okay, so paying homage to grandmother Shannon Crossbear, who we're going to bring in next, herself and grandfather Bob Challenger and myself have been holding down International Children's Month. It will be 10 years next year. 2022 will be our 10 years. Um, she is a storyteller, uh, a beautiful, empowered Ojibwe water keeper and protector. And she is uh, integrity and respect and love and care, which is our mission. And she's held that down with me all this time. And we've never accepted any money. And we've done all of this for free out of the love for ourselves and our children and our future generations. So I'm going to let her come on and tell us why she really does the work and a little bit more about herself and where she's at right now. And Shannon also runs the um, interdependence campaign for We the World. Okay, good. Yeah, I knew it was unity. Interdependence, which is wonderful because um, our work revolved a lot around oneness before we all joined We. So uh, yay. All right. So Shannon Crossbear, come on and tell these beautiful people who are going to be, um, our lives will touch now who you are and why you do what you do, please. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, beautiful Heidi. And thank you, Rick. And so good to see you, Raheem. I mean, I'm always, so uh, this is how special I think you all are, is that I've been on a couple of different panels throughout the day. And, um, and I'm continuing to do some other things because I'm so committed to this and our 11 days of global unity. Um, but I know you're special because I brought you into the wagon. So um, I'm sitting in the uh, storytelling wagon right now. And you can see I've got the stars with me. It's a, a beautiful space. And it's a space that really is, um, I always envisioned it as a place to really share stories and wisdom and gather stories and wisdom from others. And of course, it resonates with children and young people because it's like a playhouse. I like it. It's fun. I get to play in it. <laughs> so there's uh, there's all that element, too. And we get to see the future. I even have a crystal ball here. And I have the cards so we can read the hands. So um, really this idea, why youth and children? There is no life without youth and children. I just, you know, um, and I remember our teachings. I, I think you alluded to it that, you know, our children are wise and our children are coming in and we need to listen to them. Well, so the story goes that at least the teaching that I had was that when you are born, you have that soft spot on the top of your head. And as long as that soft spot is soft and open, you're still connected to this to the spirit world. You just came, you just arrived, you're brand spanking new, and you haven't forgot where you came from. But as that closes up, as it does with all of us two legged, right, it closes up. And as it closes up, we begin to forget. And we forget and we spend all, we forget what we belong to, that we belong to everything and to everyone and to each other, more importantly, that we have, we're on this earth walk together as human beings. And so we always say that children are sacred and it's not just a saying. It's not just, you know, oh, that sounds nice. Of course, we all like our kids, da, 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 da. It's, it's the truth of the matter is they are sacred because they are so close to spirit. And there's two times on this earth walk where you're closest to spirit. One is the coming in and the other is the going out. And so, so this, this, the power of the youth and children and the opportunity to connect those things in a way that creates an energy that can truly transform the world. And that's exactly what has happened. And when Heidi talked to me about International Children's Month, and we were at a ceremony at the time, and we talked, and she was talking about 
uh, a vision that she had about what she needed to do for the children, I knew 100% that I was going to support her in that because um, I'm a mother and a grandmother and I have lost children along the way. And it has not, you know, that's, that's a very sad thing. And there's a lot of children that are hurting and we needed to step up and sometimes we're shy about that. I mean, you know, the elders are shy about that in some ways. And um, and they have to not be shy. We can't we can't be shy about that. We need to to uh, to um, to say the things that we need to to say so that we can inform that future because it is that power of those two. And so with the platforms that have happened and we have supported over this time is really all of those platforms. Children love the water. Children love the earth. Children game on, right? Take it to the streets. And now it's we, all of we. And so um, what has been uh, inspiring uh, has been to see the connections of Raheem and so many others. Like when we talk about this campaign, I think uh, the youth and children campaign has spread so many different ways, right? So the, the, we need to look at the um, education of our youth, the health of our youth, the economic stability for our youth, you know, the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being of our youth. And at the same time, in order to do that, we need to be doing that for all of us, right? So inviting places and spaces where our youth and young people and our uh, children can come and inform us, uh, and not just to encourage us, but sometimes, I don't know about you, but when you've been looking at something for so long, um, sometimes you need brand new eyes to see it. And when I'm talking to my um, youngest, uh, granddaughter, um, I always get down on my knees. Because when I get down on my knees and I see things from her perspective, oh, we have so much fun. Now, the getting up from my knees is a little more challenging these days, mind you, but the getting down is plenty fun. And I get to see the world from a place, you know, there's nothing better than crawling on the ground right? Crawling on the ground with, with a little one that's crawling and discovering again this earth that we're on, right? So um, I thank every youth and young person, and I am so honored to have the grandchildren that I have. And Raheen, I will include you in those grandchildren because I see what you're doing, you know, and how you come from your authentic self. Oh, yeah, of course, you're just you're a teenage girl, you're gonna have drama, right? You know, that's part of the fun of it, right? Oh, I can tell you some stories and we'll do that at some point in time. But this is what youth and all the programming around youth, so that there's no child out there, there's no youth out there that doesn't know that they're sacred. And not just to say it, but let's act like it. And that's what the campaign, and acting like it, like it means that we don't abuse children in this world. That we don't have them work in situations that are not good and healthy and contributing to their well, wellness. That we don't allow harm to come to them. You know, that we make sure that they are fed. And I don't mean just physically, but fed physically, mentally, emotionally and spiritually. The most powerful thing that children can hear is us to petition on their behalf, to say a prayer on their behalf, to set an intention on their behalf. And you see when that happens, how everything just unfolds. So I am honored to be a part of this process. I invite everybody to have a little fun because 
the one thing that's important if you're working with youth and children, you better be having fun. Because if it ain't fun, are we doing it, Raheen? We're not doing it. Right? We're not doing it. That's I right. love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. So as, as we wind up, uh, Heidi, do you want to bring it all together? Yeah, I just want to, um, you know, to just acknowledge with everyone how, you know, stressed out and tired we are in this point from the pandemic. And just to be here together with Raheen and Rick and Shannon and feel that it's all in our perspective and it's all in what we're bringing to the world, right? What does love in action look like? What does love in action sound like? And what does love in action do? You know, if we could even just have everyone consider that for a minute and, you know, see the world through those eyes, take a step back for a second. There's a lot of rushing going on. There's a lot of heightened anxiety and stress going on. And how do we counteract that? We bring our presence to the world. It's not the world's presence in us. It's what we are bringing out into the world. And that's what we're modeling for our children. We are modeling what a valuable, good human looks like. And I implore all the adults and grownups and all the youth leaders out there, you know, to continue to feed your creativity and inspiration, to continue to feed your heart song and your soul and continue to explore and discover what you're doing here and what your gifts are. And that is how we will move forward gracefully through this pandemic. It will end eventually, right? We will be able to maintain our bodies and our communities and our societies. We will come to more love, care and respect for ourselves and others. And it will just kind of plateau out. And before we know it, we're gonna be voting in our children and youth. And they are going to be coming into these buildings where things are changing, where we see what doesn't work. And we know what does work, right? Love, care, and respect. Keeping a view, a social view, a community view of everybody having an opportunity to make it, that we can build this thing that works for all, right? And I just want to breathe with you for a second and just remember, breathing in the love and breathing out the love you may have never heard that before. I meet children every day who have never heard that before. And right at the beginning, it's like, oh, well, that's kind of weird. Maybe, but it works. <laughs> so, you know, whatever tools we can share with each other, I see so much positivity coming out of this. So I wanna just thank Rick for holding the space for We The World and for giving International Children's Month a beautiful home and um june is international children's month we have lots of time for, to prepare for 2022 and we have the children and youth theme you are welcome to join the family of people who are love in action essentially and raheen is going to be hosting a panel later on today um where we get to meet some of the children and youth who have been working with we the world and who are working on the 11 days and i invite you to be inspired and impressed and to feel yeah. the breath of fresh air that our youth are bringing to us. Let's involve them more. Let's include them more. Exactly. And let's, let's do it. Thank you, let's Rick. Let's do it. Thank you and thank everyone. Um, so as Heidi was saying, please join us um, at 1 p.m. Eastern time for our summit panel on uh, children and youth. And for all of the sessions of 11 Days of Global Unity, you can go to we.net and you'll see the entire schedule there. Please sign up. We want to collaborate with you in whatever way you would like. And uh, thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Raheen. Thank you, thank Shannon. You. Thank you, everyone who is showing thank us so love in action. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Rick. 
Uh, thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Raheem. Uh, you are a force of nature. And I am inspired by who you are and what you're doing. You know, you embody, Raheem, the future in such a compelling way. I've said before, you know, we're it's in Star Wars time. We're in Dune time. We're at a moment of duress in history of such critical dimensions with runaway climate change that I believe we need to turn leadership over to the young, young women like yourself, uh, and over to the women generally. If we had a power axis in the world right now around young people and women, I am supremely confident that we would solve our problems, certainly by 2030. But it's going to take all of us coming together, but in a way that empowers our young people, uh, not only to do what needs to be done, but to lead what needs to be done. Uh, one of the reasons why our world is in such a mess uh, is you've got basically old people, and old men. Um, running the show, and you just look around you to see the results of that kind of distorted uh, demographic. So I think it's time to turn uh, the ruling demographic on its head and uh, empower people like Raheem uh, in the world. And Heidi, I want to just acknowledge the purity of your heart and the way that you have um, just so selflessly sought to inspire and care and love uh, young people, uh, that nurturing instinct is what makes the Rahims of the world grow. I was struck, Rahim, when you said that, you know, your mother combs your hair and your father's got everything. To, that's what parents should do. <laughs> that's what all parents should do. And you can imagine if we had the nurturing of a Heidi all around the world. Uh, what a different world uh, this would be. So thank you, everyone. Uh, Rick, uh, thank you so much uh, for this uh, uh, programming of 11 Days of Global Unity. Uh, those of you who are interested, please join the after chat session uh, that Stan Pokeris and uh, Shannon and others have put together every day. Uh, the link will be uh, in the chat box. Uh, and then uh, for the rest of you, we'll see you same time same station tomorrow uh, for the seventh day of 11 days of global unity. Bye for now.